so hello friends welcome back in this video lecture we are going to discuss about lagrangian equation example for pretension effect means how uh, we will see that how pretension affects the natural frequency of a system so if you have uh, played guitar you may have experienced that just by tightening this uh, just by tightening these strings the natural frequency of the string changes so what are the factors that are affecting the natural frequency of the system in that case so just by looking at this simple system which is a mass spring system connected to one string that is already in some pretension we will see that how natural tension and compression affects the natural frequency of the system so let's start so the given data for this case is that the block mass of this block is m the stiffness of this spring is k2 the stiffness of this spring is k1 and it is initially subjected to some tension and the length of this spring is l now the first assumption that we are going to make for this problem as we don't want to go into the that much complication at this time for handling the nonlinear governing equations we are going to assume that as, uh, this is a small amplitude vibration so what we mean by small amplitude vibration is that suppose if there is an vibration x in this direction so the x by l will be very smaller compared to 1 so first let's recall our steps that will be required in order to derive the governing equation so first we have to select a complete and independent set of coordinate so for this case let's select x is as our generalized coordinate system the second is that we have to identify load in each generalized coordinate system so as there are no external force or moment that has been applied to the system this both terms will become zero and it will become equal to zero third is that we have to find the kinetic energy potential energy and the dissipation energy for this case as there are no uh, dissipative term like there is no damping present in the model so that r will simply be equal to zero so two terms that we need to concentrate first is kinetic and second is potential energy uh, the kinetic energy for this case is simply kinetic energy due to the translation of the block so that will be equal to your half m dot x dot square now if we look at the system now in this case as uh, if this system will start oscillating in this direction x what will happen is that the spring that has been connected to this block both the springs will get stretched and compressed so if there is some further stretch in this spring so let's call it as l so you can see that if there is a movement in the downward direction the spring that is connected to this block in horizontal direction will be stretched and is no more in this horizontal direction will not be uh, in this horizontal direction it will be in some inclined direction and for uh, due to that there will be also some change in length in the spring so we will also for uh, these things will be helpful uh, it will be important when we are computing the potential energy because j depending upon the change in length that spring will store the potential energy so we'll, let's try to find the potential energy for this system first if we look at the potential energy term so it will be due to k1 and due to k2 so due to k2 it will be simply half k2 x square and due to k1 it will be equal to half k1 now here is a point that i want to make is that initially there was some tension in the spring so due to tension there will be some pre displacement that was initially present in the system so for that we can write delta naught plus now due to the movement the spring will get further stretched or compressed so let's call that as a change in, change in length whole square and uh, now what we have to do is that we have to we have all the uh, we already have all these parameters like we know the k2 k1 delta naught but we need to find how much change of length will happen depending uh, based upon the value of x so for that what we can do is that we can use the pythagoras theorem so suppose initially the length was l initial and after a stretch it becomes l final and here it will x displacement so l final will be equal to a square root of l initial square plus x square we can also write it as lf is equal to uh, let's take out the l as a common so 1 plus x by l whole square 
so change in length will become l square root 1 plus x by l whole square minus l at this point if we go back to our assumption the x by l is very very small compared to the one so what we can do is that we can use the take uh, take the help of the binomial expansion and try to expand this square root term so the binomial expansion says that if there is a term 1 plus x to the power n we can write those terms in this format for this case as x by l is very small so we can ignore this higher order terms so it will simply becomes 1 plus 1 by 2 x by l whole square due to which the change in length will become l by 2 x by l whole square at this point if we try to write the potential energy equation so it will be equal to half k2 x2 square plus half k1 delta naught plus l by 2 x by l whole square square now one thing to note at this point is that potential energy terms contains the terms up to and fourth order while in the standard form v is equal to k equivalent x square it was only up to this quadratic term so what we have to do in this case we don't have any way out so we have to directly go back to our Lagrangian equation so let's recall this, uh, let's call the Lagrangian equation format so it was something in uh, in this format so t if will become for this case your q is equal to x kinetic energy is equal to half m x square and your potential energy will be equal to dv by dx so if we differentiate this term so let's first write v half k2 x square plus half k1 delta naught plus x by l whole square l by 2 whole square so if we differentiate this what we are going to get dv by dx k2x plus k1 into delta naught plus l by 2 x by l whole square into x by l now let's group these terms together so it will be k2 plus k1 delta naught divided by l x plus k1 by 2 x cube by l square so dv by dx consists of two terms one and second so it's like a summation of a plus b now as x by l is very very smaller than one so compared to one two will be very small so we can simply ignore this term just to linearize those equations so your dv by dx will become k2 plus k1 delta naught divided by l into x and it can be also written at as k2 plus t1 by l into x because t1 is equal to k1 delta naught after that if we directly substitute it into equation so we are going to get mx double dot plus k2 plus t1 by l x equal to 0 so this term will if we compare it with our final equation so this will be equal k equivalent and this is equal m equivalent now at this point if we want to comment on the natural frequency of the system like how it changes with pretension and complete compression so if we write our equation for natural frequency so it was k equivalent by m equivalent and it will become k2 plus t1 by l divided by m equivalent so 
if there is tension in the system if there is tension so your natural frequency will increase now at the same time if there is a compression in the system there is compression in the spring your natural frequency will decrease so that's the reason your natural frequency of this guitar string changes with tightening the screws because if you are uh, tightening the screws it means that if you are you are inducing some tension in the string so if there is some tension present in the string automatically the natural frequency of the string will change so that's all what i want to cover in this video i hope you like this video if you like this video don't forget to subscribe our channel so that we will keep making good videos for you thank you